Section 13 of the bill, as it currently stands, would allow a court to order the operator of a website to remove the statement, which is the subject of a complaint. Where a court has had the chance to consider the argument from both sides and come to a full conclusion, the order to remove a statement that has been found to be defamatory is an entirely reasonable one. However, in the explanatory notes for the bill, it is explained that this power is not confined to circumstances in which the final outcome of proceedings has already been determined by court. Accordingly, the court would be entitled in an appropriate case to grant an order for a removal or cessation of distribution on an interim basis for the final outcome of the proceedings is known. The power of the court to order removal before a full decision has taken place seems unnecessary, given other alternative measures which this amendment seeks to introduce. In evidence sessions of the Justice Committee, concerns were raised by media groups, including the Society of Authors, Scottish Pen, the BBC and the Ferret, through legal academics, and from civil society organisations like Scottish Pen um, and the Open Rights Group. I would like to thank all of these organisations, and particularly Matthew Rice from the Open Rights Group, for their input in the development of these amendments. So, in seeking a proportionate balance in these early stages of the def defamation dispute in the court system, this amendment proposes to amend Section 30 by introduce, introducing a court power to order the website operator to include in the website a, a prominent notice that the statement is subject to the proceedings. This notice must be in a place or forum that ensures that a person accessing the statement is made aware of the notice every time that they access the statement. I should make it clear that this amendment seeks to leave intact the power of the court to order operators uh, to, to order the operator by interdict to remove the statement at the end of the proceedings. It is focused primarily on when the proceedings are ongoing, and this power would be appropriate to be exercised. Additionally, nothing in this amendment prevents the website operator from removing the statement complained of themselves, which they are entitled to do throughout any potential defamation dis dispute. I believe the addition of a notice power for the court meets the policy, policy objectives of the bill to strike an appropriate balance between freedom of expression and protection of reputation, clarifies the law and improves its accessibility. And can I call on John Finney? Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Minister. Um, Mr. McGregor mentions Open Rights Society and commend a lot of their work. And indeed, it was via that route that I was uh, lobbied by a, a constituent concerned, and I quote here, that as things stood, you were guilty and until proven innocent. And I can commend the words that they went on to say about Mr. McGregor's amendment, that these safeguards will better balance the right of freedom of expression online with the need to fairly protect reputation. And for these reasons, I hope others will join in supporting Mr. McGregor. There may, however, be situations where a court decides that removing a statement altogether does not properly balance the rights of protection of reputation and freedom of expression. It could be that the proper balance favours continued publication of the statement complained of, but with a notice affixed to it that lets those accessing it know that it is subject to defamation or malicious publication proceedings. For example, this could be where proceedings are ongoing and a court has not yet made a final determination. The notice permitted by this amendment would be attached on the website to the statement complained of and it must be prominent. This means it cannot be hidden away on some other web, web page or set out in tiny print and therefore easily overlooked by users viewing the allegedly defamatory statement. It must also be visible to each individual user every time they access the statement for so long as the proceedings are ongoing or such other time period ordered by the court. The amendment lodged by Fulton McGregor will make us all this clear and should a court decide to use this power. It is another remedy that the court can use to assist in restoring a person's unfairly damaged reputation and is added to others that the Scottish Government have introduced. And having it on the face of the bill means that an individual knows that this is one of a, um, one of a number of remedies they can seek from a court in order to protect and restore their damaged reputation. And I hope members will join me in supporting this amendment.